One area of our lives that gets really damaged from childhood PTSD is the, is the part of our lives where we have romantic relationships. And if you watch my videos and you see the letters I answer, one theme that you'll see come up over and over again is the question, how do I set boundaries so that a relationship can turn out into the loving, committed relationship that I'm craving and not the temporary disappointing experience that I keep having? Have you had this problem? So today I'm reading a letter from someone I'll call Connie. And she says, Dear Fairy, I'm confused. I've been seeing a guy. We started out as friends. We talked a lot and I really like being around him. I knew he was fresh out of a relationship for three months and still living with his ex. Obviously not ideal, says Connie. After a while, things got sexual and I did tell him about my no casual sex rule as I don't feel comfortable in investing in someone where there's no future. I asked him before we got intimate, you told me you wanted to be alone for a while. I need to know if there's an option for dating before we do this because I could develop feelings and get hurt if it's one-sided. He responded with, I have feelings for you now and we can do everything, but I don't want to ruin what we have now. So we had sex a few times and then after a week we had a conversation and it came up that he wanted to be alone but have it all. So he wants to keep seeing me like what you're doing now but nothing more. And I got really sad and then really furious and I went into a little rage against him I'm not proud of which I can only describe as the abandonment melange that you and Pete Walker talk about. The thing is, I feel like the no casual sex boundary I put up scares away guys before they can develop feelings. He even told me, you're like my ex. She is also afraid to get hurt. You need to trust someone 100% and if something happens that you don't like, then that's when you take the trust back. I feel like there's some merit to this, but I can't see clearly how I do this in real life. How to trust and just let things play out and have boundaries to protect myself. I don't think he said this to manipulate me or anything. I think generally he's a good guy, just with poor communication skills. I'm conflicted because men value their freedom and they need trust, but I need commitment and I don't want this to keep happening because it's gone this way so many times. I tend to meet guys who are done with me after sex or fake their whole personality to get me into bed. And then when they conquered me, they are done. And it makes me feel like an empty shell of a woman and I don't want to respond to this with using sex as a bargaining chip. I think that's how my boundary gets interpreted. It's situations like this that make me even more needy and that just don't help any relationship to flourish. So my question is, how can I go around relaxing around guys and exploring the connection without being so hyper-focused on the end result while keeping my boundaries and being true to myself? With kind regards, Connie. Oh, my darling, Connie. I feel for you so much. This is a very, very painful place and I think I can give you some help today. I'm gonna to go back over your letter and this is gonna to be tough love, all right? This is gonna to be tough love and it's not because I wanna give you a hard time. It's because I wanna help you unpack like what's happening here. I wanna help you see what, what's happening and how, how the person setting you up for this problem is actually you. And that's good news because if it's you, then you can change how you do this. All right, so let's go over the letter again, line by line. You start out, I'm confused, all right, yes. I've been seeing a guy, we started out as friends, we talked a lot and I really like being around him. All right, so far so good. I knew he was fresh out of a relationship for three months and still living with his ex. So tough love point number one for you, Connie, is if a guy is still living with his ex, he's not out of the relationship. He's not out of the relationship. So if you're gonna change your life and you're going to reserve your heart for a committed relationship, one type of person that doesn't get on the list of people you hang out with romantically are guys who live with their girlfriend or ex, all right? They need to be emotionally available. And when he's emotionally available, one sign you'll have, just one sign, this is not the end all be all, but he will not live with another woman who he's ever slept with, okay? So that's thing one. <laughs> All right, so you acknowledge that he lives with this ex is obviously not ideal. After a while, things got sexual, and I did tell him about my no casual sex rule, as I don't feel comfortable in investing in someone where there is no future. 
Okay, my next piece of tough love for you, Connie, is that you don't have a no casual sex rule. You had casual sex. So whatever you may want or say, your actions communicate that you're okay with casual sex. There's no rule there, all right? So you describe this as a rule, but it's really like a preference or a desire, all right? That's what I would say. So you don't feel comfortable in investing in someone where there's no future. And you know, I'm just gonna encourage you to be more specific about, it's like discomfort. That's like when you go to the dentist and they pull a tooth and they say, oh, this is, this is gonna be uncomfortable. No, it's gonna hurt a lot. And so it's not that you're uncomfortable with it. It's, I'm just gonna speak for you here. You're devastated when sex doesn't turn into a relationship. That's not what you wanted, right? So then you say, I asked him before we got intimate. You told me you wanted to be alone for a while. I need to know if there's an option for dating before we do this because I would develop feelings and get hurt if it's one-sided. All right, so this is where I'm really hearing the childhood trauma like complicate your ability to ask or, or set a boundary here. So you say, you asked before you got intimate. You told me you wanted to be alone for a while. All right, when a guy says he wants to be alone, what that means is he doesn't want a relationship. It doesn't matter if he says for a while. A lot of times when people say, put something in temporary terms like I don't want a relationship right now, they're trying to be kind. They don't wanna say I don't want a relationship at all or they don't want one with you. And I know that's harsh, but it's really important if you want a committed relationship to just sort of take a statement like that. When you ask somebody about their availability and they say they don't want a relationship, just take it at face value. Don't put hope in that for a while. And so then what happened is, I need to know if there is an option for dating before we do this. So you're asking like, might he, if, is there an option? That means like it's possible that he would wanna date you. And what's a little strange to me is that you're sleeping with him, but you're talking about like, you're not considering it dating. And if you want a committed relationship, the first thing you do is date. You don't sleep together and then date. And I know that we all know people where that ended up working out for them, but if you have childhood PTSD, and you get devastated by casual sex, I'm just saying casual sex by definition is sex without even going on a date, like not even going to dinner. Not, not only are you not committed, but you're not even dating. So you said, I need to know that there is an option for dating before we do this because I could develop feelings and get hurt if it's one-sided. So I know how human beings are. Sex is bonding. Once you have sex with somebody, if you're gonna have feelings for them, they're going strong right then. And this bond has been formed. But even if he said, yes, I guarantee I'm gonna to wanna to date you in the future, right now this is just sex. Even if he said that, your bond would kick in and, you're, and, and that part of you that feels devastated is not gonna like that. And I'm gonna to talk to you in this video about what it could be like if the next time that you ever have sex is in a relationship with somebody you know is really into you and wants to be with you, you can reserve yourself for that situation and I'll tell you how in a minute. Okay, so he said, I have feelings for you now and we can do everything, but I don't wanna ruin what we have now. That's really interesting. Cause what you heard, you said we, you had sex after that with him. So what you heard is that he somehow went along with what you were saying, I need to know. He says, I have feelings for you now. But <laughs> right before you have sex with somebody, of course they have feelings for you, right? It's sexual feelings. It doesn't necessarily mean, he didn't even say like, I wanna date you. And he also said, I don't wanna ruin what we have now. So let's look at this critically. If setting the parameters that you would need to even be dating somebody to sleep with them is going to ruin what you have now, what does that mean about what you have right now? If it gets ruined by any kind of like we're dating statement, it's not dating, okay? So you expressed a preference and you felt like it was gonna be a boundary, but it wasn't. And so he, it doesn't sound like he, you know, pressured you from what you're saying. You sort of said, this is my boundary. And he said, oh, well, I, you know, I feel something for you now and we can do this and, you know, we don't wanna ruin it. This is a little bit of a cliche in disappointing experiences, right? Where somebody just goes, hey, we just live for the moment. I don't think he misled you here. I think he would not agree to date you. And you know, he, he sort of left it open-ended, but that's what happens. You, these negotiations 
and this clarification of what each person wants out of a out of a relationship they're the best time for them to happen <laughs> It's not like right when sex is about to happen. People's thinking is very distorted. So Connie says, we had sex a few times and then after a week we had a conversation and it came up that he wanted to be alone, but have it all. So he wants to keep seeing me like we were doing, but nothing more, meaning what casual sex, but by alone, not dating, not in any kind of a boyfriend, girlfriend thing or having dinner. And then you say, I got really sad and then really furious, and I went into a little rage against him that I'm not proud of, which I can only describe as the abandonment melange that you and Pete Walker talk about. So yeah, I totally get it, the abandonment melange. I, I don't blame you at all for having abandonment melange, and I don't blame you for being confused, because I know that you were traumatized when you were a kid, and you would have learned some of these structures about how to communicate and how to read people and how to know where they're coming from. So you felt sad and mad at him because it turns out that after he said he didn't want to date, he, di he actually didn't want to date. He, he was hoping to keep having casual sex. And I don't think that highly of him because he knew that you were worried about that. And, you know, anybody could have seen that you wanted that boundary, but you weren't holding it. And usually that happens, Connie, because we need to be loved so bad. There's such a deficit of love going on in our lives that we kind of unconsciously want to take whatever we can get and then just hope, 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 like somehow it'll turn out differently this time. But here's the thing is that having relationships like this that are casual communicate something about us that's not attractive for healthy people who want a committed relationship. People, like healthy people, they're looking for people who have boundaries, who are demonstrating that they care very much, you know, what kind of a relationship they get into. And in fact, it can be kind of part of romance to have to like chase somebody a little bit, to have to get up on your toes and try a little harder for them. And so if some guy just sort of says, oh yeah, whatever, casual sex, and you're like, well, I don't really want it, but okay, you're communicating something that they don't take seriously. You're basically telling them not to take you seriously and not to consider your needs. I don't think that's good. I don't think that's good that they take advantage of that. But the person who's got to change this dynamic because you want it changed is you. So you said then, the thing is, I feel like the no casual sex boundary I put up scares away guys before they can develop feelings. I want to give you a new idea about this because the fact is good guys who want a good relationship do develop feelings before sex happens. That's why they have sex because they have feelings for somebody. All right. So there's always going to be people out there who have casual sex and they say it's fine and it works for them. But if you have CPTSD and you've suffered with this, you know, that's just not a luxury you have. Okay. And luckily, the world is full of people who would like to have a good relationship too. And what you're communicating when you, when you say that you prefer no casual sex, but you go ahead and have it, you're communicating that, there's, um, that you have difficulty setting boundaries, that maybe there's some trauma there. Um, it suggests that maybe um, a lot of trouble could walk into your life. And I just want you to put yourself in another person's shoes who's looking for a relationship. They want to see somebody solid, right? They want to see you with all your self-respect and you being picky. And honestly, that is very attractive to both men and women. When somebody in front of them is self-respecting in that way, who has standards, people who just want casual sex, yes, they will be turned away. They will not be interested in you if you have that boundary. Good. We want them out of here. We want them to go hang out with the people who want what they want. You want something different. You're looking for something different. Now I have this course, um, dating and relationships for people with childhood PTSD. And the very first exercise I have in there, and it's actually really hard for a lot of people to do. It's to write down what you actually want. And you write down what are like deal breakers for what you actually want in somebody. And so for you, it might be no casual sex. I want somebody who, who is only interested in a serious relationship and would be interested in dating to get to know each other before it turns sexual. All right. You can, you can write that on your list. And the magical thing about writing this down, I mean, you can still break your own rules. It's always possible. Many of us do. But once you write that down, you have a clarity about you where you know when you meet somebody, you're allowed to communicate that to somebody and then find out what they say about it. And then you decide if you're going to begin dating them. I would for you suggest just like dating is really essential. If dating sounds like too heavy or too much of a commitment for somebody, 
they're not appropriate for you to have sex with, not appropriate to hang out with, okay? All right, so then you said, he said, you're just like my ex, she's also afraid to get hurt. Well, I just gotta wonder, like, why is she afraid of getting hurt? <laughs> is, is he also asking her to have some sort of casual open relationship and she's afraid of getting hurt? So, hmm, okay, wondering. And he said, you need to trust someone 100%. And if something happens you don't like, that's when you take the trust back. Okay, right there, he kind of lost me. Um, that is a manipulative thing to say. Uh, I, but you're an adult and you know darn well that's not true. You say it's compelling, but the only reason it's compelling is because it allows you to have that magical thinking that if you just have sex with him now, he's going to fall in love with you. And I, I think that's always in a situation with this dynamic, that's extremely unlikely that that's going to happen. If they have to tell you that, look, just trust me 100% and then, and then don't trust. I, I can't think of any situation where trust means that. He's, it's basically describing having no boundaries and then being discarded, all right? And then accepting that. So that's, that's what you were being set up for there. And again, because he said this, he said this is where he's coming from up front. I'm still, I know a lot of people are going to write in and say, what about the guy? He's, you know, he's responsible. And it's like, he may be, I don't like what he's doing here. I think he's taking advantage of a vulnerable person, but he didn't write me. So I'm, I'm answering you, Connie, because I want to help you just get your power back. I want you to get your power back so you can begin to have love and have the kind of relationship you want and never get treated like dirt again, never again. Okay. All right, one thing you say here is when he said that you should trust him 100% and then just not trust once he screws you over, you say, I think generally he's a good, I don't think he's trying to manipulate me, but generally he's a good guy just with poor communication skills. And right there, this is where, this is where I think your thinking got really distorted. I, I wholeheartedly disagree with you. I think he's got fabulous communication skills to, that he's using to manipulate. I mean, when you suspect that he just had poor communication skills, what did you think he meant to say? I don't think you have any reason to think he meant something other than what he did, which is use you and discard you, which is try to continue having totally casual sex with you, no strings attached at all, right? And while he is technically alone. And honestly, having sex, that's not alone. That's not alone. That's all he wants, all right? I think he has good communication skills. All right, so then Connie, you said, I'm conflicted because men value their freedom and they need trust. Well, we all value our freedom and we all need trust, all right? But I need commitment and I don't want this to keep happening. I'm with you. It does not have to keep happening, but here we go. You say, because it has gone this way so many times, I tend to meet guys who are done with me after sex. All right, again, I'm just gonna put this out there. What if you date guys for X number of months before sex is even on the table? I know, then you say, well, they fake their whole personality to get me into bed. I don't think this guy faked his personality. I think he showed his cards for what he wanted from the get-go. If you had had proper parenting, Connie, what your parents would have taught you is about how um, people, not just men, but people, when they want sex, they're gonna put on their best behavior, they're gonna look for ways to get you to say yes, all right? And that's not love, it's not love. It's totally, a, it's, it's, a, it's a, you know, it's a flirting thing that people do. And it totally works for some people. But when you have a big attachment wound, like you do, it tends to just lead to trouble and grief, okay? So then you said, and then when they conquer me, they're done. And it makes me feel like an empty shell of a woman. I don't want to respond to this with using sex as a bargaining chip. And you say, I think that's how my boundary gets interpreted. So somewhere in there, you got programmed that you having boundaries about wanting to be courted, wanting to be wanting someone to, to be into you, wanting them to date you and treat you well and show you that they are capable of a committed relationship. You got an idea that you're being needy, that you're just bargaining. That's so not true. What you're describing there is just respecting your own intentions and what you want in your life. And, it's, and, and what you're talking about here, what you want is a good thing to want. I want you, I want you to be properly loved. For anybody who had a tough childhood, who longs for a relationship, one of the most wonderful things that can happen is to end up 
being loved by somebody solid, all right? That's something I never thought I was gonna have and I get to have it now. And I, you're supposed to say stuff like, oh, a relationship won't fix you, and it won't. It's not gonna fix your childhood PTSD, but it's profoundly healing to be loved by somebody who's committed to you. So if you're going to have that, and you have this attachment wound, it's just time to clear out anybody who doesn't fit the bill. If that's not what they want, then they're not the one for you. And if you feel like you can't ask them what they want, then they're not the one for you. When you get to know somebody, you'll feel safe enough to ask them what they want. You'll be able to have deep conversations about your common interests and goals. You can say, you know, I'm interested in finding the love of my life and getting married, and um, you know, I might start dating you if if it turns out that we're compatible maybe we can get to know each other a little bit getting to know each other means coffee all right maybe a lunch dinner starts going into dating right so dating with the intention of getting to know each other romantically now this is the part that nobody ever wants to hear but if you have attachment wounds the longer you can postpone sex the better chance you give yourself of being able to discern if this person is is a fit for you and you're going to be surprised like like when you haven't had that good person yet before you, you will imagine that they hold all the cards, that they are the ones who decide whether they're going to give that love to you. But when you have a chance to be in such a relationship, you're going to find out there's a whole bunch of complexity to you too. And when you get to know somebody, you're going to have mixed feelings come up. Sometimes you'll gradually realize that this person is not who you want, even though they love you. That can happen too. You may have never even had room to have that dynamic. So you're giving both people time to get to know each other and discern what's there. And if you've had a lot of like hurtful relationships in the past, there's gonna be rough days as you get closer and closer to somebody. There's gonna be rough times, rough conversations, old wounds are gonna come up, old PTSD reactions where you know, you're fearful or paranoid or desperate feeling and when you have a really good friendship underneath that and a mutual commitment that you're dating now, that that's what you're doing, that you're hanging in there with each other, it might not mean you get married yet, but while you're dating, having that kind of security, it gives you a little bit of room to have your feelings come up. Because if this person's gonna marry you, they need to know like that you have some fragile places. You have certain situations where you become a little bit like, you know, emotional or unreasonable even. That's just part of it. That's part of what we have to accept in each other. Of course, we don't want to accept any kind of abuse and nobody should take that from us. But you, so you had said, how can I relax with guys and explore the connection without being so hyper-focused on the end result while keeping my boundaries and being true to myself? All right, I think you have a pretty good goal there, except the part about the end result. I think you do need to hyper-focus on the end result because you know exactly the result that you want in your life and that if that result is a problem, <laughs> they are not somebody to go out with. It's so simple. And I promise you, if you can actually set that boundary for yourself, like write it down, decide when, and if some guy takes an interest in you, definitely before any sex, you put out there, you put out there to him what your boundaries are, what they are. A boundary, by the way, is what you walk out of. You can say all you want, but unless you break up with a guy or re refuse to go on a date with him, it's not a boundary, right? So you're the one who's gonna keep that boundary. You're gonna be willing to walk away from a perfectly grand Saturday night with somebody because it's somebody who doesn't want a relationship. That's the boundary. You say, I'm sorry, this doesn't sound like what I'm looking for, but nice to meet you. That's a boundary. The last thing you said about your goal was that you wanted to be true to yourself. And I love that goal. That is the best ultimate goal. To be true to yourself, you have to be honest with yourself about what you really want. And so if that committed relationship is what you want, then being true to yourself and holding boundaries around it definitely means no more casual sex. So that's just something that you can decline from now on. And you're gonna be surprised when you actually set the boundary, you're gonna be surprised how people respond to you differently almost immediately. There have probably been a lot of situations where a man was seriously interested in you, but something about your pattern signaled to him that you were not ready for a serious relationship, right? 
So you're going to notice a difference right away when you actually have that boundary. So I hope you can continue supporting yourself, healing your trauma, connecting with women who can help you be clear about your boundaries from day to day. And when you go out on a date to have women you can talk to and say, okay, let me tell you what happened. Can you help give me feedback? Like, do you, what signals am I getting from this guy? And that's what, that's what women do for each other. We help each other interpret reality. And it's really important to be with people who are also on a healing path, not who are in some sort of negative um, acting out behavior, who are just going to be cynical and negative, but people who are also trying to build something better for themselves. For anybody listening who feels like you too have been affected in the romantic part of your life by childhood trauma, I have a quiz for you that lists common symptoms that show up in people who were neglected and abused as kids. You might want to take that. I'll put the link down below along with my CPTSD quiz. If you want to know more about my approach to dating, I've got a video lined up right here and I will see you very soon.